In seven real life days, this server will switch over to hardcore mode. And when that happens, all crime, including murder, will be legal. Before that, there are some rules that we have to follow. There's no PvP. You can't steal anything from people. If they have a closed door on the base, you can't trespass. And you can't trap other people's bases, but you can trap your own. During the seven days, if you die, you lose one heart of maximum health. And the only way to get it back is by eating an enchanted golden apple. Which, uh, let me tell you now, those things were nowhere to be found. I had a lot of fun making this video, but it was a lot of hard work, so if you do enjoy it, please be sure to like it. And if you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, because I'm going to be doing a lot more like it. While you're down there, leave me a comment saying something like, Wow, you were a lucky, lucky guy on day four. Or, oh my god, I can't believe that it all almost ended like that on the last day. With all that out of the way, sit back and I hope you enjoy the video. Alright, ready? And go. <laughs> Alright, day one we spawned right next to a village and immediately started looting it. We were using the Better Villages mod, so these villages were pretty huge and had a lot of good stuff in them. So I grabbed as much stuff as I could, and look at this, I already had armor on the first day. I went through these houses with a fine tooth comb, I tell you, and uh, it's a good thing I did because I found some pretty good stuff, including some diamonds. No way. Yeah, these were going to come in handy because, let me tell you, I was... I struggled to find diamonds on this server throughout this playthrough. I kept going through, I found some little odds and ends, like some iron and some gold. I grabbed this anvil so I wouldn't have to waste iron on making it. I also found this bottle of XP, and there was a few of those in this village, and I don't think the guys knew that they could uh, grab them right off the table, let alone what they actually did. And then I grabbed a bow off this wall, that was, uh, that was good. I already had some ranged weaponry, which was gonna give me a leg up on the competition. I found some actual iron armor, so I threw that on, and then I grabbed these sticky pistons, cause, uh, well, I had plans for these. I was gonna either make a trap or something, I don't know, I was gonna think of something. I also grabbed a whole bunch of things like hay bales and food and stuff like that. And look at this, more diamonds. Yeah, that's, uh, that's good. I like it, I'll take those. I had to fight some mobs because, you know, when there's multiple people on the server, nobody nobody ever seems to want to uh, sleep. And look at this, almost taken out day one by a creeper. And then just a few seconds later, I almost took myself out with my own clumsiness. Ooh. Some iron right there. Hmm. What would I want to get rid of for it? Aha. Don't need those. All over just a just a little bit of iron. Yeah, it's good. Oh, oh, boy, I'm freaking dumb. Oh my god. Ugh. Oof. Okay, that was too close. I was looking around and found another village, but before I went and looked at it, I got a little distracted by some more iron. I was having a good feeling that I wasn't going to have to worry about iron too much on this server. When I was looting the village, there was a lot of food, and I'm telling you, a lot. I also found this saddle, so I could use that to go tame a horse. There was some other stuff too, like some obsidian. And, uh, some enchanted books, yeah. I'll take those. I went ahead and put the power enchantment on my bow, because I didn't know how long it was going to take before I could get, you know, a better bow. And then look who I ran into at the village. Mr. Drew, or, uh, Thick Thighs Blanco, or whatever his name is in this. Now, for some reason, the voice chat mod wasn't working for me, and I couldn't figure out why, but eventually I did. It was... Something to do with virtual cables that I had installed on my computer and my recording software wasn't picking it up or so. I, I don't know. I figured it out later, but you know, for now, I'll just summarize. We really didn't talk about much, just uh, kind of just checking and seeing what each other's up to and uh, how we were doing so far. And then he said he had to get going because it was getting dark and that, uh, that told me something. 
told me he had a base because there were beds here in this village and he could have slept, so I decided to follow him. But because of all the trees and the bushes and it was nighttime, I kept losing him. And then, uh, and then this happened. Look at, look at my guy taken out already on the first day by, uh, by a skeleton. That's good. It's good for me. I didn't see anything that resembled a base, so I gave up and decided to go out exploring, try to find a place to build my own base. While I was out, I ran into this little guy. Look at Hey, he's pretty cute, huh? I saw some horses and I decided to go ahead and tame one. The first one I got really wasn't all that fast, but the second one, man, let me tell you, he was, uh... He was really fast. I tried to get him across the river, but I didn't realize that horses can't swim, so I had to had to build a little bridge for him to run across. I found another village that I named the Red Village, but I didn't loot it just yet. I just copied down the coordinates and decided that I would come back to it later, after I had already built a base. I regretted that decision later, though. Somebody, somebody came through and picked it clean before I could. I found this spot up on a mountain across basically a freaking canyon, so I went and put my horse in a safe spot and I built a little makeshift bridge over to the spot. Got my horse across, I built a little fence for him so that he couldn't get away, and then I basically made myself a little stone tomb to keep me safe at night while I built my base. started clearing the area out a little bit and let me tell you this uh this tree mod was real nice saved a lot of time for me i got this enderman to come over i killed him but he didn't drop me a pearl which i knew i was gonna need for some quick escapes on purge night i knew i was gonna need an actual bridge so i immediately started trying to figure out where i was gonna put this thing i wanted it to be centered with this because that natural crevice right here is pretty cool This will be where the bridge is. Leads over to the mainland. I mean, it doesn't have to be gigantic, but I do want it to strike fear in the hearts of my enemies. I was going to need a lot more wood for it, so I went back to cutting trees, and I found this little guy. Sorry to destroy your habitat, little guy. Um, I have a seed. You want to be my friend? No? Okay. He didn't seem to like me too much. So I just cut down a few more trees and I decided to call it a night. Day two, I spent a lot of time clearing out a uh, big enough area for my base because I was going to want this thing to be kind of big. I was going to have walls and everything. And then I figured out that you can't really cut these these bigger trees like this uh, the way that the mod intends. So I ended up just leaving uh, a couple of these laying around. And then I started work on the bridge. I spent the entire day trying to make this thing look good. I knew it needed to look like it was actually hanging across the canyon. But no matter what I did, I couldn't get everything to line up just right. I couldn't get it to, I don't know, it, I couldn't get it to look right. It didn't look good to me. So I went and I uh, looked up a guide on YouTube on how to build bridges, which I will link that video down below if you guys want to go check that out. Anyways, I had this thing looking good. Yeah, I was, I was pretty proud of it. Only problem was I was gonna need a lot of iron. I'm gonna need so much more iron. So I went exploring down in this cave and I found a lot of iron. I mean, it was a ton. I think I came out of there with about four and a half stacks of iron. This place was pretty massive and every time I thought I had found an end or the bottom or something, it just kept going. I also found some diamonds while I was down there. Yeah, I was pretty excited about that. There was four of them too, so that was good. 
I decided not to push my luck and get greedy for iron and end up falling to my death or have a creeper drop on me, so I went back up, started smelting this iron and getting the chains for the bridge made. And while I was putting on the finishing touches to the bridge, <laughs> look at look at what happened to my boy Drew. Uh, he was uh, he was having a rough go at it, I guess. Anyways, I finished the bridge. I thought it looked really good, and so I started on the walls for my for my base. I tried a couple different things. I wanted I knew I was gonna use oak and jungle wood for this. And at first I tried the jungle inside of the oak, but I didn't really like it, so I switched it up. And I also carved the bark off the oak, and I like that look a lot better. And then I had to go do something in real life, and I intended to get back on, but I never did that night. So, yeah, here's, here's day three. So the next day I had a wall built, but I wanted an actual working gate, so yet again I looked up another tutorial on YouTube, which I will link down below if you guys want to see. I was going to need some gravel, a little bit of redstone, a couple of repeaters, and three of those sticky pistons that I grabbed earlier, so yeah, those did come in handy. I got it finished and working, I tried to dress it up a little bit, you know, to hide everything. It didn't look great, but... <sighs> It worked. So I put a couple of finishing touches on the wall. For some reason I thought I was going to use this and actually walk along it, but I never did. And then I placed down some torches to stop stuff from spawning on the inside and I moved all my stuff into the new area. Once I got all my stuff over there, I grabbed my horse and moved him in too and then for some reason I felt the need to tear down my old little shack and I mean yeah, sure. It, it was a little bit of an eyesore, I guess. So, yeah. So now it was time to start working on building the actual tower that I wanted to build. And I was going to need a lot of stone. So I jumped down into the canyon and found a nice little spot to start mining a whole bunch of cobblestone. And then I smelted it to get actual stone. I, I wish you could do this stuff like deep slate, you know, just with deep slate you can get polished deep slate right in your inventory but you have to smelt cobblestone to get us to, I, I don't know it doesn't make any sense to me but you know whatever and then I made a little infinite water source you know just because and then I filled in this back corner of my base not only because I mean it was kind of ugly but I also wanted to have some crops down here I'm not really sure why because I think I might have used these crops maybe once but you know better safe than sorry and then I started on the tower. I wanted this thing to be pretty big, tall enough to where I could actually look out over the walls and see if anybody was coming to me. I took some inspiration from another guy on YouTube. I'll try to find that video and link it below too. But uh, this was what I got before I got bored of building and decided to go out and loot that red village that I had found on the first day. And like I told you before, there was absolutely nothing here. Like, this place had been picked clean. Oh, Tiki Man. And then I saw this. Also, just a heads up, for some reason my audio this day decided to take a crap, so... I apologize in advance, but I promise you guys this is the only day that was messed up and I will try to show as little of it as possible. Somebody's trying to base up right here. I found somebody's base. I don't think it's Drew though. Unless he was planning to cover all this in dirt. Hmm. Yeah, somebody trying to be sneaky. Alright, so... The rules say you can't steal anything. And you can't go in somebody's base if they have a door. And it's closed. And you can't really go in uninvited, too. But as you can see, there are no doors. And it's not even finished. 
So I'm not going to take anything. Not only because of the rules, but also I don't want them to know that I know that this is here. This is good. We finally found one. I just thought about making a pit trap like right next to their stuff that they wouldn't really notice and they could just walk over it and they'll fall and die. But the rules do say that you can't make any traps within a hundred block radius of somebody's base. So, can't do that. Oh, why did I make that a rule? I kind of screwed myself on that one. Yeah, I know why I made it a rule. Is because, you know, I get complacent and I don't always check my base for traps. So, I didn't want somebody to come over there and sneak a trap in somewhere and me fall and die and lose a heart before purge. But anyways, after seeing that base being built over there in the Red Village, I decided that I wanted to go out and start looking around for other players' bases. So I spent about two or three hours looking around, seeing if I could find any traces of life. And uh, along the way, I got a little bit bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't really going very well. I didn't I didn't really find anything. And then I saw this ruined portal and I decided to go over and loot it because I was pretty sure that enchanted golden apples spawned at these things. I guess it's a really low chance because I never did find one at any of the ruined portals that I found. When I got home, I set up a little chicken pen and look, look what happened here. Yes. Oh, wow. Four came out of the one egg. That's crazy. I didn't know that could happen. I don't know if that's a common thing or not. Let me know down in the comments if that's like a rare thing or if that just happens. I, I don't know. Did I get lucky? And then I decided to go out exploring again a little bit, but this time behind my base. And I found something really good here. It was a desert village and it had all kinds of good stuff in it. Water breathing? Eight minutes? Oh my god. And speed? Oh! No way. No freaking way, dude. Depth Strider? Okay. okay. Flame looting too? Fire protection? I also found probably the happiest looking dude in Minecraft that I had ever seen. Oh, it's a camel. What's up, buddy? You look happy. <laughs> I found a couple more potions, but that was about it. So I decided to move on, and then I saw this. A temple. Okay, right, okay. Gotta go unload loot, and then we come back. My loot was full, so I had to go unload a bunch of stuff, and then I went back. I was really hoping for an enchanted golden apple, but I didn't find one. I did find some gold, and... A couple of those armor trim things, I don't know, but yeah, it was it wasn't a complete waste of time. No oh god apple. And then I saw that the server was gonna restart and I was afraid that if I was out and about that it would kinda mess up the game a little bit for me, so I decided to stay here. And that's where I logged out for the day. All right, day four. Yeah, this was a day of many, many close calls. So when I got back on, I decided to go up onto these mountains and explore those, try to get a better vantage point of everything that was around me. Well, if I go up there, then I can get a vantage point of what all is around real quick. Oh my God, there's iron everywhere up here. Well, I know where to go when I run out. It just goes on. 
almost feel like I should get off my horse and is that that's a dripstone on top of the mountain kind of crazy I also found another village but there wasn't a whole lot here uh, I got I think I got a couple of name tags and I found this little uh, this little tadpole guy uh, I want it now and then I found what I called the Grand Canyon of Minecraft oh I just find the Grand Canyon Goes on forever. Super cool. And then I spotted another ruined nether portal and I went over to search it to hopefully find a god apple and uh Yeah, just uh just look at this. That was close. Oh, man. Yeah, a random creeper in the woods almost taking me out. Ugh. That was not good. Oh, now I'm... Very anxious. So that little incident kind of put me on edge a little bit, so I kind of... I just bur burrowed into the side of this hill until the next morning and I was very careful coming back out very careful all right please for the love of god have a god apple here please 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 no. I mean, I guess I'll take golden care. I hear a creeper walking around. Somewhere. Uh, yeah, I was a little disappointed, but uh, I kept exploring, and yet again, I wasn't looking where I was going, and this happened. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. Oh, my freaking heart just sank. Oh. What'd I get for not paying attention where I was going? Oh, that could have been so bad. Jeez. Yeah, that was good. And, uh, you'll see in a little bit that I did not learn my lesson. So anyways, I stopped by another village and found an anvil and decided to go ahead and name my horse, and... Yeah, it was a good name for this guy. Speedo Torpedo. Yeah. <laughs> Worth it. Yeah. Pedo Torpedo. A guy. And then I found another hole. No! Oh! Oh! Oh, what is it with me? I'm falling. Yeah, maybe I should have called this the the day of the holes or some no, no, that's that's dumb. Just anyways. Yeah, so I dug myself out of there and I slept the night away. <sighs> when I woke up the next day I found a pillager tower, which I have actually never explored in Minecraft before. Oh, so that was pretty exciting. Little little pillager. Power there. Hmm. I wonder if God apples 
on in there. I also found four villages right next to each other. Loot this before I go to the pillager tower. That's whoa. Oof. Literally right there. Um is this two different villages right next to each other? Bro, what? Look, look at my guy up there, just chilling on the roof. What, what, what is he doing? What is he doing? This one is a lot like the one over at spawn. So there might be some okay loot in this one. What? Uh, what the heck is going on here? Three? Three villages. There's no way. Oh my god, another hole. Uh. Oh. This is, uh... Yeah, this one's pretty big. Dude, there's holes everywhere. I don't know how I feel about riding my horse places now. Anymore. Oh my god, three b villages. Dude, what? What is this? Another hole. If I keep going, is there another village? Is another one gonna pop up somewhere? Oh, the explorer in me just wants to keep looking. Bro. Bro, no. Really? Really? Another one. Okay, four. Okay. Alright, well. It's rigged. The, the whole video is rigged. Jesus. So I only looted two of the villages because there really wasn't anything good in them, so I decided not to waste my time with the other two, and I went ahead and went over to the Pillager Tower. Loot this bad boy. It doesn't even look like there's any pillagers there. I know you can get out now. Oh, there's another one. Come on, sir. Oh god, there's three of them. Alright, is that all of them? Gotta tear my shield up. I got, there's gotta be loot here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the frick is this? The dark oak logs? Are you kidding me? Yeah, to say the least, I was a little bit disappointed with the loot. I I kind of thought that there would be better stuff here. Somehow they killed the Iron Golem without the Iron Golem fighting back, even though I had freed it. But anyways, I decided to free the little blue guys. I thought they were, thought they were pretty cute, and I wanted to keep them. There's more pillagers. Where did he run from? He came up. There's another one. I guess they just constantly spawn, huh? I need to find something to give these little guys. Come here. Where's the other one? I like I like my little friends. Ew, what's up, little guy? Oh, they're so cool. I don't know where the other one went, though. Oh, hey, there he is. Shit. I'm gonna go. I want him. I need him. He's my other little friend. Hey, I saved you.
Yes, got him. All right, let me get all this XP real quick. All right, let's grab a uh, speedo and then go back home. What should I name him? Um. Oh, I got it. Pixie and Trixie. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Pixie and Trixie? That's your names. I don't know if I can put name tags on you. We'll try that when I get back, when we get back to base. All right. Uh, where did I put that? And now Trixie. Yeah, so it turns out I could put name tags on them, and that was that was good. I had two little blue friends. I like it. Hey, Pixie and Trixie, what's up? Yeah. So now I guess these guys won't despawn, right? Since I put name tags on. Them. Sweet. Yeah, I almost forgot that I found this little guy in one of the villages too. So. I just dumped him right there in the infinite water source and started to do something, and then this guy showed up. Oh, shit! What the hell? That scared the crap out of me, dude. He's so fast. How did he get inside? These guys don't spawn them, do they? No. Yeah, I don't know how this guy got in my walls. Uh, do the do the little blue pixie guys spawn them or something? I don't know. Get, somebody, somebody, get down there in the comments and let me know, please. I need, I need answers. Probably could have got him to kill himself with an arrow, but, you know. Anyways, I set up an enchanting area, and I decided it was time to go mining for diamonds, because I knew... I knew that I was going to need diamond equipment for, uh, for Purge tonight. After I'm done mining for diamonds, I'll probably have enough... ...stuff to, uh, build an XP farm. At least. I got efficiency three on this bad boy. So I got down a deep slate and I found a little bit of gold, which was good. And not too much longer after that, I found my first few diamonds. Oh, yes. <sighs> okay. And then I found two more, and then maybe 30 minutes after that, oh, three, finally. Oh, so I was down here for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and I only had about eight diamonds. And I was going to keep going until, until I ran into this. I don't know whose tunnel this is, but 
somebody's on right now. So I don't want to go looking and hmm what to do I think I'll leave for now and come back later yeah I didn't want to go down there while Nemo was on just in case that was his area and you know he saw me running around down there in his mines so I decided to go back up to my base and wait until Nemo got offline. And let me tell you, my timing was impeccable. There, I could follow him. Well, I don't need to worry about traps because is it it's against the rules to trap somebody else's base when it's not the purge. Yeah, the main thing that I was upset about here was that I wasn't already up the, the side of that cliff. So I couldn't follow Nemo back and try to figure out where his base was. Not really any sense I'm playing dumb right now. I went ahead and made some boots and a chest piece with the diamonds that I had found and then went to go see what I could get enchantment wise on my chest I want to see what I can get on my chest plate if anything what oh man I need level 30 oh uh, I need to build this XP farm yeah prop 4 that was good I was very excited to see that and then I went ahead and put the Feather Falling book that I had found from the Desert Village and put that on my boots. I also went ahead and put the Flame book on my bow too. Okay, I figured out how to mute myself in game. So. That's good. Now Nemo knows where I live. Let's say I need to even out the playing field. I need to know where he lives. But I can't go down that tunnel until he's off. Just in case that's his. So, in the meantime... Eh, I need to build this uh, XP farm. But where do I want to build it? I mean, I guess I could build it right here, to be honest. And just as I was getting ready to build the XP farm, Nemo got offline. He left. Well, I was going to work on this XP farm, but now I can go look at that tunnel. Just double check. Yeah, it's just me. Literally, it was the end of the tunnel. Like, what are, what are the chances? Now, when I tell you I spent four ever down here. I mean, I had spent probably at least an hour, probably even closer to two hours, looking. 
I couldn't find an exit out of the tunnels, like a way up to the base. I kept going back and forth through the tunnels, trying to find, you know, something, stairs or something like that. These tunnels led to a couple of caves and it was all just dead ends. And some of these caves weren't even lit up before I got there. I was just about ready to give up and I decided to go through one more time slowly and just take my time and look at everything. And thank God I did. And then put the, the torches in, right? Wait. Ah. How did I miss that before? Oh, this is exciting. I feel like a I feel like a secret agent man. Secret agent man. Oh, another. Ah. careful because I don't know what's up here yeah you are allowed to trap your own base <sighs> another cave uh, and it's not properly lit Yeah, it took me a minute to find my way up all the zigzagging pathways and the random torches put down everywhere, but I finally found it. Oh. Why are there so many beds? Efficiency four. Okay, well, I can't take anything. I can look all I want, but I can't take anything. I don't think this is the main loot. There's no diamonds. I have so many beds, though. And... So I followed the stairs up, and technically there wasn't a door, so technically I wasn't breaking any rules. I just broke a block to get out of their base. Oh, shit. I can't lose a spot. Ow. Oh my god, there's another one. There's nothing here. It's literally an underground secret base. There's a village right there. Go check that out. I wonder if that's one I already found. Yeah, so I saw this village and I wanted to go look at it real quick and... As I got closer, it started to look a little bit more familiar and... And then it hit me. This is Drew's base. That's Drew's. Yeah, it turns out this was the same field of bushes and trees that I had tried to follow him through on the first night. 
No freaking shot, dude. I found it. Completely by accident. No wonder all the random freaking torches and crap were everywhere. My man just be placing that stuff like crazy. <laughs> Drew, when you watch this, just know that it was so freaking difficult to follow your trail. Okay, so that's two, potentially two base locations that I know about. That one, and then the one over there. I wonder if that one's Nemo. I'm gonna go see if it's uh, been built up anymore since I saw it the uh, earlier. So I went to go check out that base, you know, look, check on the progress of it, and uh, nothing else was done to it. So I determined that this was not Nemo's base because, based on the gear that I saw him in after seeing him walk across my bridge, I knew that he was geared and he had probably a lot of good stuff. So, yeah, that told me that this wasn't his. Mm -hmm. So I headed back towards my base, and uh, somebody was waiting to give me a little jump scare. Oh my god. You scared the crap out of me. Where's the, where's the other one at? I don't know. Well, I hope that it's okay. Yeah, I didn't know where my other little friend went. I had kind of lost track of them when I went down in the mines, and uh, when I came back up, there was just this one. Oh, this isn't good if there's a baby zombie. I need to open my door. Oh. Too close. Oh, that spider's trying to climb my walls there. Yeah, so I decided that I had had enough excitement for one day, and I logged off for the day. Alright, so day five, I started working on the XP farm, and I was pretty high up there, and after... All the falling I had done on day four, I was a very nervous guy, uh, let me tell you. Um, yeah, I'll I'll link the uh, the video that for the guide that I followed down below if you guys want to check that out. He did it in creative, but obviously I couldn't do that. I guess if you have an elytra, it would be a lot easier for you to do, but I had to use like water buckets and stuff like that to get up and down at some parts. Uh, I forgot to put a torch up. But anyways, I was just going about building the XP farm, and I I noticed something about my chickens. Hopefully there's no unwanted guests waiting up there. Where did all of my chickens go? The cats. Back to business. Yeah, we're just gonna pretend like that didn't happen. Anyways, I remembered that I had the guy, the, the, the tab pole in the bucket, and I wanted to get him set up, so I took him inside and put a little bit of water down in the middle of my floor and dropped a moment in. There we go. Hey, what's up, little man? Yeah, he's happy. My guy, the tadpole. I don't know what I'm gonna name you. Hey! My guy, the toad! What's up? How's it going? Yeah. I like it. 
We're gonna keep you in here though, so that the uh, the cats outside don't. Uh, you, well, you know. Yeah. All right, cool, man. Yeah, it was a guy with a toad in my house, and it's uh, it's good. He was a cool guy. I liked him. Anyways, I finished up the XP farm, and I got up there, and I was waiting around for a little while to make sure that it worked, and... Oh, it... it worked. Yes, it works. I sat there for like three minutes letting them build up, and then... Getting all the XP it got me up about six levels. Yeah, six levels in three minutes. That's... that's really good. Hey, hey yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Six levels? For three minutes? Let's go. So I got enough levels to put protection 4 on my chest plate, and then I was also able to get protection 3 on my helmet. Ooh, I didn't realize that had thorns too on it. Bro, let's go. Yeah, I was excited about that thorns too, and that meant that anytime something or somebody hit me that they would take a little bit of damage too so that was good so i went mining for a few more diamonds because i wanted to make you know the rest of my armor and also some weapons but uh i only found a couple of more which i know to you guys you know watching this it's all happening oh so fast but I think all in all, total, I probably spent a good at least six to nine hours just mining throughout this entire playthrough. And that was a little maddening at times. Anyways, I made a diamond pickaxe and I tried to get some good enchantments on it. I spent a good little while getting a bunch of XP and re-rolling by using uh, the books. I really wanted mending, and I couldn't seem to get it, so I, I really thought about taking this efficiency 4. But I decided to wait and keep trying to see if I could get mending. But between building the XP farm and all the mining that I had done trying to get diamonds, I had spent about 4 or 5 hours for this day, and I was pretty tired, so I just went ahead and got offline. Alright, day six. Yeah, some interesting stuff happens here on day six. Uh, make sure you stick around for that. Anyways, I spent the first part of the day trying to get more enchantments and I still wasn't getting what I wanted. Unbreaking three. Smite four. Unbreaking three. But I did happen to get power four, so I made sure I put that on my bow right now, yeah. It's good to have a bow with power 4 and flame on it. And then I got tired of that, so I decided to go check on the base over at the Red Village to see if it had been worked on at all. Hmm, somebody's been working on it. The question is, though, who? I think that base over there, I think that's Sona. Hmm. I don't know why, I just feel like it is. Yeah, there's a hill right here, I think. Anyways, I still didn't know where Nemo's base was, so I spent the next little while looking around for that, and I found oh. a couple of little caves with torches in them, but they ultimately led to nowhere. I guess somebody had just come through here and went through them to see what was in there and then left. Why would they come down here? And then I started building up into these really tall trees to get a good look around and see if I could find anything, and uh... Oh, I did. Oh. I found something. How did I see those trees weird right there before I saw all the torches right there? Tell me that. I 
I don't know if whoever lives here has villagers. I doubt it, because they're pretty far away from villages. And then I got the scare of my life. Oh. That scared me. So, I didn't open anything. It was already opened by the horse. That's oh, a cat. I'm not gonna steal anything, I just wanna have a little look-see at some... ...some of the items you have. How do you... How am I able to open these? Ah. Wait, why, why am I... ...saying that? What you got down here? There wasn't really anything down here, just a bunch of torches, like, whoever was based up here and kind of gone through and was looking for different ores and stuff, but hadn't really gone too far, so. I also know that Fox has a, uh, nether portal, and I haven't heard one yet, so. I do believe that this is Shadow's base. Hmm. It's interesting. Oh, hello. Uh huh. Hmm, very nice. I am a nosy, nosy man. I want to know everything. Get on the horse? Hey, look at that. Alright, well, whoever it is, just know, I didn't open anything, your horse did. <laughs> your horse let me right on in. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure exactly whose base this was, but I had a really good feeling that it wasn't Nemo's. Um, so I kind of decided to leave some signs to maybe put a little bit of doubt in this person's mind as to how hidden they actually were, or were not. <laughs> uh, I still, uh, I still kind of really want to find Nemo's base. He said he was my neighbor. Now, I've seen him getting achievements from the Nether, so I know that he's been to the Nether. I also know that he has diamond, or it looked like diamond armor that night that he was crossing my bridge. So I know he's got a lot of, I, I know he's got a lot of stuff. So that little underground thing over there, that definitely was not him. I think it's Shadow. Because him and Drew, or I think they've been on the least out of anybody other than um, Cory and Sona. Yeah, so with deductive reasoning, I decided that uh, that was not Nemo's base indeed. And then I got... I got a little idea regarding nether portals. Alright, so I don't really know how the portals work. I know something about the... The, uh, the, the coordinates have to match or some, something like that. I don't know, it's super weird. So, what I'm thinking is, since everybody seems to be underground, then I should get to a lower point. Yes, okay. So I got my obsidian, I went down to where my mines were, and I built the portal, and when I went through... <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't, I was not expecting this. Here we go. Oh. What the... Where am I?
Holy shit, I am a genius. Oh my god, what? What is that? Is that a is that a fortress? <gasps> I see a blaze. Is that a chest? There's no way that's not looted. But I could always Ooh, no, I probably don't want to go in there. I don't want to die, bro. There's an enderman. Okay, just follow just follow the freaking torches, okay? Just do what you came here to do. Follow the torches, the torches, the torch. Oh. Oh no. Oh god, I found a fortress. Oh god, I've never been to a fortress. Where are the rest of the torches? Wait, do, do things just automatically attack me on a fortress? Well, I know there's like Williton, Williton, Wither skeletons and stuff. I I think I need to go this way, maybe. I don't see any more torch. Up oh, there's a crafting table. Dude, look at all the endermen. Holy crap. <gasps> oh, I see wither, wither, wither skeletons. God. Yeah, this was my first time down in the fortress, and uh, it definitely scared the crap out of me. Unfortunately, the place had been picked clean, but they did leave behind the blaze spawners, so I was able to grab a few blaze rods because I thought that I could make potions with them, which you can, but you also need nether wart, which was not down here either. So I just gathered what I could and I got the heck out of there, and uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting this. Awkward. If somebody got on right now. Ah. I need to be careful. He's got TNT. Okay, that door was already open. Once again, I found myself in the village that was in between mine and Drew's base. I, uh, don't know how I missed this trapdoor out of all the times I had gone through this village. These sneaky people living underground, they're all moles. Every one of them. Oh my gosh. I'm pretty sure that's Nemo. Because he called us neighbors. So, yeah, hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so I went down there and broke my portal just in case Nemo could come through mine as well. I also decided to send a little message to Drew by burning all of the trees above his base. <laughs> yes. So 
So I went back to my base, got a little bit more XP, and just went ahead and put Unbreaking 3 on this uh, Diamond Pickaxe, which also gave me Silk Touch, which was fine, because I could take that until I could get Fortune on a different pickaxe. So I mined for yet another eternity before I finally found three whole diamonds. Yes, good stuff. I was able to get Fortune 2 on this iron pickaxe, so that was good. So I used that with the diamonds that I had found previously. Seven. Alright. I used those to make some leggings, and turns out I could get Protection 4 on those as well. I wanted to do a little psychological warfare on uh, Drew and Nemo, so I started work on something that I thought would be very annoying. While I was working on that, Shadow got online, and it turns out that he wanted to meet up and talk about some stuff. I think he was slightly worried about Nemo. <laughs> Before I headed over there, I finished figuring this uh, little sound contraption. <laughs> oh my god, I can annoy somebody so bad with that. Oh, it's so loud for so far. So I went over and placed one right in front of Nemo's trap door. Oh dear baby Jesus, I need to get away from that. Oh. Yeah, that's annoying me. He'll definitely hear that down in his base. I can hear it from over here. Yeah. <laughs> Psychological warfare, baby. So I finally went over to see Shadow, and he had built up his base a little bit since I had last seen it. Also, for some reason, his audio was super low, so I'll try to increase the volume of his voice, and if I need to, I'll add subtitles. What's up, man? If you do hear clicking, it's because my sensitive. Oh, you good. Hey, look at that. You said you died, right? Yes. <laughs> Did you ever find a enchanted golden apple? So I know they spawn, they spawn at the, uh, I guess the fortresses in another, and then also the deep dark, or ancient city, I mean. Yes, that too. And then I think there's a very rare chance of spawning at a uh, ruined portal, but I still haven't found any at all. Yeah, I haven't found any. I kind of felt bad for Shadow because he didn't have a whole lot in the, uh... Seemed kind of lonely out here all by himself, and to be honest, so was I. So I offered him a few gold apples to help him survive in exchange for his friendship and alliance on Purge Night, which he graciously accepted. So now that I had some safety insurance for Purge Night, I was satisfied with day six and went ahead and logged off for the day. Day seven, my guy. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna be an interesting night. To say the least. Hey, I'm talking to you. Oh, okay. Well. So I basically just used day seven to do some last minute things like getting some more diamonds, a little bit more gold, and I also put some trim on my armor. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool, I like it. I look like a freaking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. <laughs> I guess I'm Raphael. Eh, alright. I used the diamonds I got that day to make some enchanted swords, and I got some pretty good ones. I got uh, 
Sweeping Edge 3, Knockback 2, Sharpness 4, and Fire Aspect 2, which I combine those two swords into one. I also went ahead and put the Blast Protection 4 book that I have found onto my boots. I also set up the note blocks in Drew's base, which apparently drove him crazy later that night. <laughs> I trapped this guy in a boat because I had plans for him later for purge night. So come purge time, I will just dig it out, murder him, and then run over to Nemo's village and start a raid, and then run away. <laughs> oh, it's the perfect plan, yes. <laughs> and then I set up a bunch of torches around my base so mobs wouldn't spawn, and possibly make it more of a pain in the butt to defend my base later. And then I filled the underneath of my pathway with TNT. So just in case I might come up to my gate trying to start some stuff, I could just push a button and blow them away. The last thing I did was put the finishing touches on the base, trying to make it look good as well as practical. And with that, I was ready for the beginning of the end. This was it. The moment I have been preparing for for the past week. My base was trapped. My gear was stacked. And I made my first move. Oh, here we go. Oh, my heart is pounding. Alright, the raid is good. Now Nemo can't come out of there without having to deal with the raid. After starting the raid, I went back to my base and sat on my roof and waited. But I didn't have to wait long before I saw somebody. I wonder how that raid's going. Oh, I see him. He ran away from it. Where is he going? Is he trying to flank? Or is he going after somebody else? I'm surprised Drew or Nemo hasn't said anything about the noise. Oh, my axolotl scared me, bro. <laughs> Dude, I'm so on freaking edge right now. I knew he was around here somewhere. Where, oh where have you gone? Where, oh, where have you gone? I see you. <laughs> this man had been sitting up in one of the trees that I left standing on like day two, watching me and waiting not thinking that I would see him. <laughs> I'm so close. Got him. At this point, I was wishing that I had knockback on my bow. I could have... I could have just shot him right out of that tree and probably either killed him or injured him really bad. Oh, shit. How did you hit that? I don't know. <laughs> 
And then he kind of disappeared, but thanks to this voice chat mod with the directional sound that I had, I was able to figure out that he had tunneled under my base. So I decided to make a move. I waited till nighttime and I purled out of my base in hopes that he would be waiting on the other side of the wall. But he wasn't. He was under my base. So I followed the perimeters of my wall looking for a hole hoping that I could sneak up behind him. But unfortunately I did not find it. I got back in my walls, got up to my gate and heard footsteps right outside of the gate. So I placed the button and pressed it and ran away waiting for the explosion. Here we go. But it never came. Oh, hey there, buddy. Oh, hey there. How's it going? Huh? How's it going? Oh, it's going. I would have been real surprised if you put TNC attached to that button. Oh, but I did. I don't I don't really know what I was doing here. I think I was just showing off how fast I was. Uh I don't know, but just watch. Oh, I missed. <laughs> what is that potion of strength? Speed. Speed. Ooh. had done it. I had won my first ever PvP battle, and I felt unstoppable. I quickly gathered his things and patched the hole in, that he had put in my wall, and ran back into my base to collect my thoughts. And then I decided it was time to stop sitting in my base and go looking for somebody. And the first place I went was to the base in the Red Village. I didn't see anybody at first, but then I caught a glimpse of a name tag. But by the time I got up there, he was already gone and I could not find him anywhere. Sona, where are you at? Oh, I saw him. I thought I saw a glimpse of him, so I went running up the hill towards where, you know, I thought I saw him. But by the time I got up there, he was... Yeah, he was he was gone. Where did he go? So then I decided to go somewhere where I knew for a fact that somebody was there. Sadly, Drew was nowhere to be found. He wasn't here in his base, but if you if you want to see what this guy was up to, uh, make sure you stick around to the end because uh, there's there's a funny little clip you guys might want to see. I don't know where Drew went, but that was smart to move. I think that was him that I saw running up this hill. Not Sona. Sona's still back in that village then. And then, on the way back to the Red Village, to go hunt down Mr. Sono, this happened. 
No. Drew burned to death? What? Turns out Drew died by fire, and, you know, at first I thought it was kind of funny, and then I got a little bit worried. Wait, how did he... I got worried because I thought maybe he was trying to burn my base down. I gotta check my base. Was he trying to burn my base down? Alright, my base isn't on fire. <gasps> what are you doing? I see you over there. Yeah, at first I thought this was Sono and that he had stolen my horse, but turns out this was just Shadow. Wait, was that Shadow? There's somebody else. What the hell's going on? What are you doing? There's two of them. Boo! Wow, so come on, bro. I want to do say hi. Jump in. <laughs> Jump in the water. <laughs> I was like, this is a cool base. I saw somebody on a horse riding around. Who was it? Can you kill me now, please? <laughs> I can. <laughs> Do you really want to die? Are you not even going to put up a fight? I don't have anything prepared, dude. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> All right, well. I could, I could spec. I could hang out. Yeah, you can spectate and record if you want. Or just spectate. Yeah, I, I immediately felt bad for this. I mean, yeah, he he asked for it, but at the same time, I felt bad because he didn't he didn't really have anything. And I guess throughout the course of this past week, he had been kind of sick and not feeling good, so he couldn't really get on as much as everybody else. But I just want to say, Sono, you're a champ, man, and thanks for joining this event. Thankfully, Shadow had gone back to my base, and I, I caught up with him. So I filled Shadow in on what had happened with Sono, and after letting him know that the only two people left to find were Cory and Fox, we decided to try to go back to his base and uh, get his map of everything that he had already explored, and compare it with everything that I had already explored, and see what was left to look through. And then I noticed while typing in chat that while Drew was spectating and had teleported to Fox, he had gotten the achievement of going to the Nether. So this told me in Shadow that Fox was probably hiding somewhere in the Nether. And we decided to go there and see if we could find her. Oh, please don't hit the land. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> That would suck. Alright, this will lead into Nemo's XP farm. Oh, put some gold on. So we walked around for a while and we looked in a, a couple of different places. We found ourselves over in the basalt. Uh, biome, I, I guess. I asked Shadow where he thought that she would most likely uh, hold up at since he knew her the best. And he informed me that she would probably be way up high. Like, all the way up to the ceiling barrier high. So we decided to just cut our losses and head back before we got lost. And, uh, yeah, something, something happened. We only have less than an hour in anyways. No! Oh god. Oh, okay. Woo hoo hoo! Woo fa! I gotta be more careful. Yeah, it was a hole and it was a uh, mag magma block. Oh my god. Thank god it was a magma block. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go pretty slow now. <laughs> yeah, so it seemed like throughout this entire week, out of all of the holes that I had fallen in and the near-death experiences that I encountered, it just, I didn't really learn anything at all. But luckily, probably thanks to Featherfall, I survived.
And then we went around just burning down random buildings because for whatever reason we thought that Cory might be held up in one of them in like an attic or something. And eventually I stopped and I looked around. So much blood had already been spilled. People were hiding in holes out of fear for their lives. Not to mention I had almost just died in the nether right at the end of this entire thing. But that's neither here nor there. So I decided to message in group chat to see if everybody would be willing to sleep the night away, ending the purge, and letting whoever was still alive win. Everybody agreed, so that's, that's what we did. Once the event was over and everything was safe, Fox showed us where she had been based up at, and she was also underground. This is unreal. These people just... Like I said before, they're all just moles just living underground. <laughs> but yeah, this place was pretty cool. It was awesome, actually. Yeah, I kind of wish that I had based up here. As for Corey, well, it turned out that him and Drew had teamed up since day one, and... um. Yeah, here's here's what they were doing during the purge. Yeah, it's good. It's just <laughs> just messing around, being a couple of dorks. But you know, that's okay. They had a good time, and that's all that matters. If you guys made it all the way through this video, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I put a lot of work and a lot of effort in this video, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to give it a like. It really helps with the algorithm. And if you're not subscribed, just, you know, maybe consider doing that because I would love to do more of these. And if I do, then, you know, that means you would be notified when I post it. But anyways, thanks again, guys. And I'll catch you in the next one.